This week, I'm going to be discussing a piece of art by Flemish Baroque master Peter Paul Rubens. It is called Samson and Delilah and dates from between 1609 and 1610. This work has many of Rubens' characteristic stylistic elements, including rich colors, dramatic light, and voluptuous figures. He took a single moment and expanded it into a stunning scene. To learn more about it, then keep on listening. In order to examine this painting, I think that it's important to understand the story of Samson and Delilah. It comes to us from the Old Testament in the Bible, specifically the book of Judges, chapter 16. From birth, Samson was destined for great things. God instructed his parents to have him take the vows of a Nazarite. This would allow him to protect the people of Israel because he would have both the protection of God and superhuman strength. But if Samson's hair was cut, he would lose all of his abilities. For a while, things were going great for Samson. He was beloved by his people and their key to winning their battles against the Philistine, the greatest enemy of Israel at the time. In fact, Samson's killed 600 of them with only the jawbone of a donkey. Now that's what I call an ass kicking. But then a woman named Delilah entered the picture, and this spelled trouble for Samson and Israel. Delilah thoroughly enchanted Samson, but she wasn't above a bribe. Once they learned of Samson's love for her, the Philistines offered Delilah 1,100 pieces of silver if she could learn the secret to his strength. She took them up on their offer and began to use her feminine charm on the mighty hero. It took her three times before Samson finally spilled his secret. One night, after Samson fell asleep in Delilah's lap, soldiers snuck in and cut off his locks. Now without his strength, the Philistines were able to capture him. After blinding him, they took Samson to the temple of their pagan god to be sacrificed. But God gave Samson one last chance. His strength returned and Samson brought the temple down around him. The Philistines were killed alongside Samson and Israel was saved. For this painting, Rubens chose to depict the moment of Samson's betrayal. He is sprawled out on Delilah's lap, the focus on his rippling muscles and hair. Delilah slightly leans back, almost as if she is repulsed by her sleeping lover. Her breasts are exposed as if Samson fell asleep shortly after they made love. Delilah is classically beautiful, speaking to her reputation as a temptress. Behind her, an old woman holds a candle. If you look closely, you can see how her profile is nearly identical to Delilah's. Is Rubens perhaps showing the viewer her fate for her transgressions? The candle illuminates a soldier, shearing off Samson's power-giving lock. A group of soldiers stand just beyond the doorway, waiting for the deed to be done. Once it was, they could pounce. Finally, in the back of the room stands a statue of Venus and Cupid. This isn't necessarily historically accurate, but that was not the reason Rubens included it. His viewers would have understood that Venus was the goddess of love. Her son Cupid was a bit of a trickster. Combined, they were a symbol of the story we see laid out before our eyes. Next, I'm going to discuss Rubens, his style, and his works. But first, let's take a quick break. All right, now that we're back, I'm going to discuss the life of Peter Paul Rubens. He was born in 1577 in modern-day Germany. His father was Calvinist, but he was raised Catholic by his mother after they separated. Now that was quite the scandal. Jan Rubens was a lawyer and was hired by Anna of Saxony. She was unhappily married to the local ruler, William of Orange. Rubens and Anna became lovers, and he fathered an illegitimate child named Christine. After this was discovered, Peter Paul and his mother moved to Antwerp. He was well-educated in the humanist school of thought and eventually traveled to Italy to learn the history of the great masters that had come before him. Rubens traveled all over the Italian peninsula, studying and learning techniques from various artists. The works of Venetian artists, Titian, Tintoretto, and Veronese, Renaissance masters, Michelangelo, Raphael, and Leonardo, and even the somewhat contemporary Caravaggio inspired him. Some of his sketches survive, showing his skill at copying some of the greatest works in our history. When he returned to his home country, Rubens set up a workshop and began painting professionally. His work became highly sought after and Rubens became quite famous, so he leveraged this into a political career. As a devout Catholic, Rubens' work was inspired by the Counter-Reformation. He traveled to the royal courts of France, England, and Spain, using his painting and people skills to foster new relationships. Rubens was extremely successful. His catalog lists 1,403 known paintings, not including those attributed to his workshop. They vary from mythological to religious to political and finally even portraiture scenes. It's no wonder that he is one of the most famous and beloved artists in history. Some of his most famous works include the Maria de' Medici series, The Rape of the Daughters of Lucippus, and The Three Graces. Peter Paul Rubens died in 1640, likely of heart failure due to his long history with gout. If I had to pick two words to describe the style of Peter Paul Rubens, they would be dynamic and sensual. He took ideas from his travels, injected some of his own flair, and created something fairly unique in art up until that point. The main goal of his work was to create a story for his viewers. A single moment expanded just enough so that they would know what was going on. To achieve this, Rubens utilized diagonal composition, drawing the eye to specific details, and rich colors and lighting, a technique borrowed by Caravaggio. His male figures were often extremely muscular, like those of Michelangelo. 
However, it is Rubens' female figures that draw the most fame. They are always fleshy, with voluptuous curves and an exaggeration of the feminine form. His style is so distinctive, in fact, that the term Rubenesque was coined to refer to any curvy female figure in art. If you want a more in-depth look into his style, I've linked my YouTube video on the subject in my blog post. If you remember, I talked about Italian Baroque master Caravaggio in last week's episode. Make sure to give it a listen if you haven't already. Well, he is making an appearance this week as well. We know from historical records that Rubens spent some time in Rome, so art historians can be fairly certain that he would have seen the works of Caravaggio and been inspired by them. We can see that in Samson and Delilah for two specific reasons. Firstly, we can see the use of dramatic lighting. A single candle held by the old woman illuminates the scene. This was a technique commonly used by Caravaggio to add intrigue. Rubens uses this to remind the viewer that this was a clandestine affair. Secondly, we see the use of rich, deep color. Delilah's slightly discarded dress is a rich red. There is a beautiful tone to the wood panels of the room, and even the barber is dressed in a deep blue. These details weave a fascinating scene in a single moment, one of Rubens's many talents. The single moment that Rubens set out to capture was that of love and betrayal. Samson truly loved Delilah, but she betrayed him for the promise of a big payday. Rubens was a romantic at heart. He was married twice, and both of his wives featured heavily in his work. So, he uses these feelings to portray the complete trust that Samson had in Delilah. But there's also the betrayal of the hair cutting. Perhaps Rubens is pulling from his own experience of his father's betrayal. Peter Paul Rubens is truly a Baroque master. He took the well-known story of Samson and Delilah and captured it in a single moment. The audience nearly holds their breath as they wait for the knife to cut Samson's hair off. The rich colors and dramatic lightning also help to set the scene. This is a work for the ages. Surprise! It's an Accessible Art History, the podcast bonus episode. All the way back in episode 22, I covered Peter Paul Rubens and his work, Samson and Delilah. Recently, this painting has been in the news. According to a report, AI analysis of Samson and Delilah indicates that there is a 92% chance that this work was not by Rubens' hand. This is a fascinating development that prompts discussion about the intersection of art and technology. So to learn more, keep on listening to this special bonus episode. Although I covered this piece in episode 22, I think that it's important that I provide a little background before diving into the story. Samson and Delilah was created around 1609 to 1610. Today it hangs in the National Gallery in London, and its famous oil sketch is in the Cincinnati Art Museum. As the title suggests, this painting shows the moment when Old Testament hero Samson was betrayed by his lover, Delilah. The work was commissioned by Nicholas II Rock, the Lord Mayor of Antwerp, and a good personal friend, Rubens. After his death, it was auctioned off. It was at this time that the identity of the artist became murky. In the 17th century, Dutch painter Gerard van Honthorst was believed to be the artist. However, when it was in the Liechtenstein collection in Vienna, Austria, in the 18th century, the work was attributed to Jan van den Hoek, a principal assistant of Rubens in the 1630s. In 1980, Samson and Delilah was purchased by the National Gallery in London for $5 million. At the time of the sale, that was the third most expensive painting ever sold. This month, September 2021, Swiss company Art Recognition announced that they had conducted an AI study on the painting. The study, as I mentioned earlier, indicated that there was a 92% chance that this work was not painted by Peter Paul Rubens. In order to provide a baseline assessment, the company scanned nearly 150 works that were confirmed to be painted by the artist's hand. The word fake has been tossed around, but it is my opinion that that's a bit sensational. Although there have been discussions amongst art historians for decades that this work was not created by Rubens, but it's possible that it was painted by a member of his workshop or a contemporary artist because analysis of the wood and paint dates it to the Dutch Baroque era. One scandalous theory put forth by independent scholar Euprovacine Dioxidus stated that the work disappeared at some point in history and was replaced by a forgery. This is based on small inconsistencies between the work hanging in the National Gallery and a work which I featured in the associated blog post that shows the painting in the background. Regardless of the outcome, this enigma is incredibly fascinating. However, it does bring up a lot of questions. Primarily, can computers understand art? They work in code and binary numbers. Art is based on technique and emotion. Even with the latest advances, can AI truly understand what art is and what it means? Honestly, it's impossible to know, but it does create an interesting dialogue. It's amazing how technology is being used in the art world. Even 400 years later, we're still learning new things about famous pieces of art. Thanks for listening to this bonus episode. Season 11 is set to premiere on Monday, August 4th, so I'll see you soon.